cooking shows that bombed, faulty kitchen products, and a sitcom that nobody watched, Emeril Lagasse may be one of TV's most popular celebrity chefs, but his many failures are hard to forget. TV producers Harry Thomason and Linda Bloodworth Thomason, best known for designing women, thought they had another hit on their hands in the early 2000s with Emeril. Emeril was a sitcom that starred Emeril Lagasse as a loosely fictionalized version of himself. Lagasse was cool to the idea, as he didn't think he possessed the acting skills needed to anchor a scripted comedy. ABC, where Lagasse regularly appeared on Good Morning America with a cooking segment, declined to broadcast Emeril. Newly installed NBC Entertainment president Jeff Zucker had tried unsuccessfully to poach Lagasse for his network's morning show, Today, and ended up ordering a pilot of the sitcom. After NBC executives and a handful of TV critics derided the show, which consisted primarily of Lagasse interacting with a wife and kids, the Thomasons reworked Emeril to put the chef in his element. So, the show became a backstage comedy about the production of a TV cooking show. In the version of Emeril that actually aired on NBC, the family element was dumped, and TV veteran Robert Urich joined the cast as Lagasse's agent. Fans of Lagasse's cable cooking shows did not follow the chef to a narrative network sitcom. Following horrendous reviews and low ratings, Emeril was canceled by NBC after seven episodes aired in the fall of 2001. It would finish the season as the 82nd most-watched show on network television. Lagasse launched many products bearing his name, including kitchenware and a spice blend called Emeril's Original Essence. Media company Scripps, which owned the Food Network in the mid-2000s, placed Lagasse at the center of a show on another outlet it owned, the Shop at Home Network. That TV show, called From Emeril's Kitchen, did feature Lagasse cooking, but the show mostly had the celebrity chef hawking products and gadgets that had his name on them. After about a year, however, Scripps canceled the series. That's because the company completely shut down the Shop at Home Network in 2006. Needless to say, From Emerald's Kitchen couldn't save the channel or itself. The Food Network went live in 1993, and Lagasse joined the operation shortly thereafter. His cooking show Essence of Emerald debuted in 1994, while Emerald Live premiered in 1997. Airing weeknights in primetime, Emerald Live resembled a late-night talk show, but it was food-focused. Along with live music and guests, the show featured Lagasse exuberantly cooking for a studio audience that cheered whenever he said, bam, 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 bam. After a 2004 study suggested that viewers wanted programming beyond the standard cooking show format, the Food Network spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to revamp Emerald Live. The network built a new set with high-end equipment, cut Lagasse's show-starting monologue, and brought in guest chefs and emerging rock bands. The Food Network was after a younger audience favored by advertisers. None of the superficial and structural changes worked. The audience for Emerald Live, one of Food Network's costliest shows to produce, gradually shrunk and remained older. Executives asked Lagasse to be a regular contestant on Iron Chef America, theorizing that he'd attract new fans to Emeril Live. Lagasse said no to the offer. Meanwhile, his agent asked the Food Network to make Emeril Live appeal to a different demographic entirely, families, by inviting guests like Elmo from Sesame Street. I want to make some eggnog! Oh, okay. With nothing helping the slow demise of Emeril Live, Food Network canceled the series. In the 2000s, various cable channels generated event programming and self-promotion by staging their own award shows. Like MTV did with the Video Music Awards a few decades prior, the Food Network Awards introduced its own show in a similar vein. The first ceremony was taped at the Food Network South Beach Wine and Food Festival in February 2007 and aired that April. Lagasse hosted the award show, seen as he was the network's biggest star at the time. The chef presided over the event as the master of ceremonies, introducing presenters and handing out awards himself. Many of the prizes were chosen by Food Network viewers, including favorite comfort food combo, best ballpark eats, and favorite coolest cocktail. Even though Food Network trotted out all of its stars for the broadcast, it wasn't a successful venture for the channel. As a result, the Food Network Awards were never held again. The last episodes of a revamped Emerald Live aired on Food Network in December 2007, ending a 10-year run of what was once the channel's trademark show. Just over two years later, another network attempted to revive the series, but with a few tweaks. Eye on Television, a little-watched general entertainment channel, debuted one of its few original, non-narrative programs in March 2010. The Emerald Lagasse Show was taped in front of a live audience and presented the chef in an on-set kitchen preparing dishes in real time, just like he'd done for a decade with Emerald Live. However, the new the series took on a format and look that was similar to a late-night talk show. The show supplemented the cooking segments with musical performances from a house band, taped segments filmed around New York City, and Lagasse eating with celebrity guests. The Emerald Lagasse show couldn't lure viewers to the obscure eye on television, though. The variety show lasted just five episodes before it was canceled. 
Over his decades as a chef at historical and influential restaurants, Lagasse created a wheelhouse that consisted of rich, spicy, and abundantly portioned dishes, often made with lots of fat and meat. With cooking and eating trends moving toward healthier and leaner options, the Food Network's sister network, The Cooking Channel, tried to get in on that by placing Lagasse at the center of the movement. So, in 2010, Fresh Food Fast with Emeril Lagasse premiered on The Cooking Channel. It was an instructional cooking show, similar to Emeril Live, but this one was produced in a filmed format with no studio audience. It was also set in a homestyle kitchen where Emeril prepared lower-fat, veggie-forward dishes. Audiences weren't much interested in seeing the man who made mouth-watering party food tell them how to cut fat and calories out of their diet. Fresh Food Fast with Emeril Lagasse spawned a tie-in cookbook, but the show itself endured for just a single season, consisting of 20 episodes. Following the quick and unceremonious demise of Fresh Food Fast with Emeril Lagasse, the cooking channel made another attempt just a year later to feature Lagasse in a TV show. This time, producers got the celebrity chef to leave the studio and hit the road. The originals with Emeril featured Lagasse touring around major American food cities to interview iconic local chefs, cooks, and restaurant owners in their own kitchens. Then, the two established chefs, Lagasse and his host, would cook one of the restaurant's most famous and important regional favorites. For instance, in San Francisco, he stopped by the Buena Vista Cafe. Meanwhile, during his visit to Atlanta, Lagasse had shrimp and grits at Mary Mac's Tea Room. In a limited run of 13 episodes, Lagasse spent two episodes exploring restaurants in his professional headquarters of New Orleans and three in New York City. He didn't get a chance to expand his palate any further, as the cooking channel canceled the originals with Emeril after one season. Following the demise of Emerald Live in its original format on the Food Network, another outlet thought it could restore the magic of Lagasse's 1990s cooking show heyday. In January 2011, the Hallmark Channel ordered a Monday through Friday series hosted by Lagasse. It was an attempt to bolster its daytime lineup around the acquisition of Martha Stewart's daily talk and lifestyle show, Martha. Both shows would air as part of a programming block called Hallmark Channel Home. The fast-paced, lively cooking and conversation series, Emerald's Table, earned an initial order of 52 episodes of 30 minutes each. The show debuted in the fall of 2011. Hallmark touted it as one of its primary offerings for the 2011-2012 season, but Emerald's Table wouldn't last into 2012. After airing daily cooking shows for a quarter of the year, Hallmark canceled the series. In 2014, the TNT Network launched its own food-based reality competition show with On the Menu. Ty Pennington of Extreme Makeover Home Edition hosted the series, with most of the food-related elements handled by Lagasse. Food is a competition. Uh, like a sport. Officially billed as the Menu Master, Lagasse assisted home cooks as they developed dishes that went on the menus of chain restaurants across the country. Among the well-known eateries that participated were Chili's, Denny's, and Emeril's, Lagasse's own restaurant. Despite the involvement of Lagasse, On the Menu was a ratings bomb. TNT's experiment with culinary competition shows was short-lived, as it aired a single season consisting of 10 episodes. Lagasse's lasting success can be attributed to a combination of cooking prowess and lots of personality and charisma. In 2016, he left the kitchen and instructional food prep behind to focus on just being himself for his fans with the Amazon Prime video series Eat the World with Emeril Lagasse. Adopting the joyful and celebratory travelogue format pioneered by Anthony Bourdain, Lagasse trekked around the world to explore and share with viewers the food traditions in different locales. He was always accompanied by a different friend who also happened to be a celebrity chef. Eat the World earned raves from television Vision Insiders, who nominated the series in five categories at the 2017 Daytime Emmy Awards. It won for Outstanding Single Camera Editing and Outstanding Culinary Program, the latter providing Lagasse with his first Emmy of any kind. Nevertheless, the series barely registered with critics and audiences. Amazon declined to order a second season, leaving Eat the World cancelled after a brief six-episode run. Lagasse is an indisputable icon of American food, so he's more than earned his place as a recurring guest on Bravo's high-stakes cooking competition series, Top Chef. Between 2009 and 2014, Lagasse showed up to critique and mentor contestants numerous times, and as a stalwart of that series, it only made sense that he'd show up on the Just For Kids spinoff. Top Chef Jr. featured child and tween cooks competing in culinary challenges for money and prizes in a setting much like the original Top Chef. Lagasse served as a special guest judge in a season one regular episode and in the season two finale cooking showdown. Top Chef Jr., with or without Lagasse, wasn't the ratings hit that Bravo hoped it would be. After two seasons, running in 2017 and 2018, production ended on the Juvenile Food Series. 
By the 21st century, the name Emeril Lagasse carried a lot of respect. A well-known chef synonymous with high-quality and well-prepared food, Lagasse was regularly sought out by packaged food companies and kitchen equipment manufacturers to provide his endorsement. In 2010, Lagasse was paid to license his name and image for use on a line of canned, ready-to-eat noodles and sauces meals designed to compete with Chef Boyardee products. The chef's smiling face graced every can of Emeril's BAM meals, which came in varieties like rock and roll real beef ravioli. However, the product quickly disappeared from store shelves. Lagasse went on to star in infomercials touting a cooking gadget branded with his name, the Emeril Power Air Fryer 360. But wait, this is so much more than an air fryer? However, Lagasse and manufacturer TriStar Products were the named parties in a class action lawsuit filed in Florida in 2021. Some consumers, who didn't know everything they needed to know about their air fryer, reported that the line of Emeril Power Air Fryers were prone to overheating, smoking, and giving off flames. Plaintiffs claimed that TriStar and Lagasse both knew the merchandise was shoddy and allowed it to be sold and marketed nonetheless. A judge ultimately dismissed the case.